Greetings everybody, Happy New Year, if it is New Year when you're watching this. Currently for me though it's still 2018, uh, however this is going to be my New Year episode. I'm doing it in my journey world here because, well, usually I go caving and I do need resources in this particular world. Therefore we're just going to do it here and I really hope this is a half decent cave, otherwise this could be the shortest caving... Are oh, you serious? Right, we're gonna have to. Oh, oh, never mind. I spoke too soon. Um, but yeah, now this is uh, New Year once again. This is the third or fourth time I've done one of these videos, so I got a lot to speak about. When I was in Portugal, actually in October, I was watching a lot of YouTube and I was having a lot of time to think about things. I wasn't obviously doing recording or anything, and I made a note of things that I wanted to speak about. And I was gonna do an update video speaking about them, but. I never felt motivated and I decided just to leave it until now. So we got that to look forward to. Also, I asked for questions on Christmas Day in a short video. So we've got those to look forward to as well. Uh, so first of all, I should say that if you are not a fan of videos with lots of cuts in them or things edited out and all that, then feel free to <laughs> skip this video because there will be a lot of cuts and a lot of... Uh, edits whenever I make mistakes or decide to edit stuff out to shorten the video length. The reason I shorten the video length isn't to make it quicker to upload, it's just because often I feel something's boring or meaningless or I don't say it in the correct way and I decide just to cut it out. I do occasionally edit what I've said to make more sense. I don't do that often, but sometimes I edit the order of my words or things like that. So. We're back in uh, my journey world. Last episode was, of course, the 50th, where I think I went caving in that as well. I don't quite remember. So we haven't done any building in the last two episodes, but, I mean, most of this series is just building, so I think we can be forgiven for having a longer than is probably necessary break from it. Uh, but yeah, this will be the episode in which we just see in the new year. Let's get down to business, shall we? So, I'm going to start with the Q&A because I'm aware that some people may only be here for the Q&A for me to answer the question and they may not really be that bothered about the rest, which is understandable. I have no problems with that. <laughs> Very rarely will I finish a YouTube video uh, or watch it right the way through. I'll often skip through and all that. Uh, but anyway, let's get down to the questions without me nattering on. So, uh, some of them I'm going to answer, some of them I'll answer later on because they tie in with what I was going to say anyway, which is very convenient when people <laughs> prompt me in that sort of way. Uh, but yeah, first question comes from Adam. Some of these are about football, by the way. If you have no interest in football, then I do apologise. Anyway, Adam asked what my thoughts were on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer becoming the manager of Manchester United. Uh, now, obviously, Manchester United have had a bad run of late, or a difficult run of late. They've won a few trophies, but it's not been easy since uh, Sir Alex Ferguson retired from his role as manager. Solskjaer, I think he was a good manager over in Norway, in his homeland. But obviously, his only job in England was when he got Cardiff City relegated from the top league. Could he do a good job at Man United? I mean, he's already done a good job. He's That's three, three very convincing wins. Okay, it's against... Uh, lesser opposition, but you know you got to win them all. So yeah, so far he's done a good job. Can he can this continue? I think so. I think if he keeps to his guns and keeps his philosophy open, and if he adapts when things become tough, then uh, he's definitely got the ability to do well at Manchester United. So yeah, I, th I think it's a good appointment. I think it's sensible, especially as they we're just looking for a a temporary manager at first. And who knows if he does a really good job, they might give him it permanently. Fun fact, actually, uh, back in 2011, I think it was, uh, we played, we being St Johnston, my favourite team, we played um, the Manchester United reserves in a, it was a testimonial for one of our players, and uh, Solskjaer was actually manager of the Manchester United res reserves that day. I didn't go to the game, though. Can't remember why right enough, but it's a game I would have liked to have gone to. Next question is from Sneaky. Who do you think is going to win the Premier League? Um, well, I know who I kind of want to win the Premier League. I would kind of like Liverpool to, to win it, because obviously they've not won the top division for a long time, since 91 or 90 or something like that. Will they do it? 
I mean, there was that stat that showed that Liverpool were the only team in the last 10 years to be top at Christmas and not win the league. So hopefully they can change that this time around. I think they could do it. I think of all the times, because think about it, 10 years ago when they were top at Christmas, Fergie was still around and Ronaldo was still around in the Premier League. And uh, The time before that, 13-14, they had a good squad, but it wasn't like convincing if you know what I mean they were good going forward not so good in defence this time though they've got a good defence good attack good manager I, th I think they can do it so I'm going to see Liverpool I hope Liverpool can do it thing is though um, they've not actually won a trophy fun fact Liverpool haven't won a trophy and I'm not saying this to gloat but they haven't won a trophy since 2012 it was early 2012 when they won it so they haven't won a trophy since my early days of playing Minecraft which seems like uh, you know an age ago now, so they, they need to win a trophy soon. Next question was from Santa, he asked me my top four La Liga predictions, for those that don't know La Liga is the top footballing division in Spain, and he's clear, clearly testing my knowledge, because <laughs> I'm not overly sure who's top of La Liga. Top four finishers will be, I'm going to go Atletico Madrid are usually up there, Barcelona and Real Madrid are given, and finally I think Sevilla are up there or thereabouts. Sevilla are a team, I'm not quite sure how they do the league, but obviously they do really well in the Europa League, so I'm going to go for Sevilla to finish fourth. Winners of the La Liga will be, I think, oh, who's going to do it? I think Barcelona. You, c you can very rarely look past them. Next question, it's all good folks, We've, we're off of football now, so if you're not a fan of that, you can join back, uh, join back into the discussion. Uh, uh, Frisky Savage actually asked, uh, will you ever go to the US? If you've ever been. I've never actually been to the US. I'll be honest and say the US doesn't excite me all that much. I mean it's cool and all but there are with all due respect other places in the world I'd rather go. The biggest reason I would go to the US would be because obviously I've got friends that live there and most of my, well, most of my good friends live in the south and in the uh, west, in the south and the west, so I'd probably travel to one of those regions. It's something I have thought about, and by thought about, I mean I've looked up like flight prices and things like that, um, but like east coast flight prices are, they're expensive but they're manageable, uh, west coast flight prices are uh, a whole nother ball game, so if I do go, it'll probably be after I've saved up a lot, so yeah. When I went to Portugal, my ticket there costed less than, oh I can't remember, it was like less than 90 quid, less than 80 quid, which would be about, I don't know, $100 or something, I don't know what the exchange rate is now, but it would be around $100, uh, so it's dirt cheap, at least for us. I had a few questions about my birthday, now, obviously I've never mentioned it in videos, but the thing is, I don't really mention it in real life either. I'm not, I don't want to be like a, or seem like a spoil sport or anything, but I don't really celebrate my birthday, which might sound sad. I don't like put any sort of significance on it as a day. It's just, for me, it's just a day of the week. In real life, I don't really tell anyone else when it is. I'm not all that big and um, having people, you know, come up. I Okay, I know that's hypocritical because I, I wish people happy birthday too, but I mean, I... I don't wish many people happy birthday and uh, I do it purely because I know that that person, you know, cares a lot more about their birthday than I care about my birthday. Oh yeah, and actually it was I think four or five years at high school before people figured out when my birthday was. I mean, they weren't like trying to guess it or anything, it was just, I never mentioned it and, you know, nobody knew, nobody really cared and it was only that it was this one time it was my birthday and the teacher, it was some sort of special registration and the teacher happened to have a list of names along with dates of birth on a sheet and when they read out my name it was like oh and happy birthday by the way it's like oh okay in front of everyone so that was uh, pretty funny it wasn't some great revelation um, but I guess what I'm trying to say is like on the day obviously I'll have a moment where I'll think oh I'm another you know my age has increased but uh, yeah I, I don't really celebrate it an awful lot certainly my last five or so birthdays have been very underwhelming that's just the way I I roll to be honest we're all different I don't really attach significance to many days to be honest and I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing or a healthy thing or an unhealthy thing or whatever but I, I just take each day as it comes and enjoy it for its own uh, significance. So next Zedger asked about a mixtape um, I will release my mixtape as soon as pigs fly so there's that question answered and I sad asked about or he suggested I watch the DC movies and I will at some point I'll get around to doing it not sure when that'll be but uh, I've, I actually watched, I know The Incredibles 2 isn't a 
DC movie, but while we're on the topic of movies, I watched The Incredibles 2 the other day, and The Incredibles is my favourite movie. I wasn't disappointed by Incredibles 2. I would I, I would say I enjoyed Incredible like the first one more, but 2 wasn't a letdown in my opinion. I, I quite enjoyed it. Obviously at points the plot was fast and very much fantasy, like with some of the stuff they were doing, but it's a cartoon superheroes film, of course you can excuse all that sort of stuff. Uh, but no, I really enjoyed it. Other questions I will answer uh, throughout the duration of this video. Uh, first off, I'm going to speak about next year, what you could expect. Well, I'm not going to give away, obviously. I don't tend to do that. I should mention that in terms of quitting stuff, I've spoken about this before, but if you see me not doing something or not posting something, it doesn't mean I've quit it. There may be series this year that stop and that's not because I got bored of them or quit them, it might just be because they're too time consuming or I want to take a break or there's other stuff I'm doing. So I just thought I'd make that clear. Uh, and that kind of leads me on to talking about my PvP situation. Uh, I don't do an awful lot of PvP. I still play occasionally with uh, Zenger. I'm still open to playing. Other people still ask me about PvP and I'm still willing to do it if I'm available, if I'm not busy. Generally, I'm not going to be pursuing it an awful lot next year. I mean, I... That's kind of, that was kind of the case uh, last year, certainly the latter half, but I I guess my point of talking about this is just to say that I've not, this isn't me quitting it, you know, I may this year have a sudden urge to do it a lot, in which case I will for sure do it. I guess one of the things is I've got more of a drive these days to uh, do other games. There aren't that many servers that really take my fancy, if you know what I mean. Uh, for example, the other day I was looking for something to do, I went on Cubecraft, they don't have survival games anymore, which is a tad annoying because that, or they might do, I couldn't find it. I looked around for survival games and they didn't seem to have it. It's a tad annoying because obviously that was my preferred mode when on that server. Other things just don't interest me as much, there's no real uh, good UCs, or no, there is good UC, just there's no UC that I can really buy into that well. Uh, play UC would be the closest thing, but the thing is a lot of the Play UC games don't interest me. You know, things like Flower Power, uh, even UC Meet Up to an extent, Gone Fishing, you know, those sorts of things just don't. Even Scenario Madness, people re regularly vote for Triple Ors and things like that. I, I just want a good old vanilla game. It's just nobody plays vanilla these days. And things like, like Hypixel's good because, uh, you know, Zedger enjoys playing it and a lot of people play it, but I don't enjoy Hypixel an awful lot, so that's why I generally don't go on it. If a new server comes around, if I find something that I enjoy, then I'll probably be more likely to check it out, buy into that and uh, give it a go, but unless something comes around that I'm really, really motivated to do, I'm probably not going to do an awful lot of PvP. So that's basically the situation in that. I would play more Arctic UHCs, it's just, again, I don't find... Like, they're good, but I don't find them as enjoyable as I would like, basically. And it's no fault of their own, because I'm... Sh like, they're good UHCs, I know that. I, I just personally, they're not for me. Although I will play them from time to time with uh, folk, or if I'm streaming or whatnot. I've not actually streamed a UHC in a while. I think the last UHC I streamed was a nightmare, so... <laughs> Might be a while before I venture down that road again. And that also leads me on to speaking about uh, different emotions that come from playing video games. It's something I've thought about uh, a lot and I narrowed it down. I narrowed my thoughts down into two different categories. There are thrill games and there are accomplishment games. I know that's not that good. I could probably have done better and I could probably define it better, but in short, Thrill games are that rush of adrenaline you get after winning a UHC or getting a, a really intense kill. Whereas accomplishment games come, or the accomplishment feeling comes after finishing a city build in Minecraft that you've been working on for three years or something. That's the two kind of extremes, those are the two kind of examples and for me they're quite broad and you, you'll you get crossovers, like for example, if you're playing say an adventure game, you might have elements of thrill in it when you complete certain intense sections, but at other points you 
me have the feeling of accomplishment because you finished a level or you've completed the game, you've 100 percent it. It's not something I've really uh, thought about until recently. And I was trying to really put myself within this philosophy and my own gaming experience. I was trying to shape it based on these uh, thoughts I was having. And really, PvP is the only pure thrill sort of experience I have in gaming. I don't play an awful lot of multiplayer, you know, I don't play things like Fortnite or uh, COD or Overwatch or these sorts of games that I'm sure, you know, give that sort of thrill. I do play some more, I do play more accomplishment games, as it were, you know, things that require a lot of work, a lot of grind, but at the end of it all, okay. And at the end of it all, you may not get, you know, a rush of adrenaline or a feeling that's, you know, makes you super ecstatic. But there is still a, sat a sense of satisfaction of what you've done. And this year I've certainly focused more on the accomplishment style of things with other games I've been playing as opposed to the thrill which I get from uh, from PvP. This has all been about PvP. I'm not trying to knock PvP here or say it's bad. So in short, I'm definitely yeah, more focused on the accomplishment side of things. I don't play video games necessarily for the feelings, for the thrill or the sense of accomplishment. But, you know, that comes into it. That has to be something that shapes my uh, point of view. And that's one of the good things about YouTube is that it can, well, for me, it saves the moment of accomplishment or of the thrill or whatever. You know, for example, after Zenger and I won that, you see where uh, Zenger got, uh, it was highlights 300, Zenger got six kills. That was a such an intense game. That was a true thrill feeling. You know, th things, things like that, I'm happy to have you know saved up on the flip side there's plenty of stuff in my past that i wish i'd recorded for example uh i started play i started doing minecraft pvp in 2012 it didn't take me too long to get my first win on the walls mc the walls the game i enjoyed playing back then and i think i got something like eight or nine kills to win the game uh, keep in mind that the game was 40 players 30 of which you could kill so in effect i killed about a third of the game and it was such an intense game, and it's stuff like that I wish I could have saved. Obviously, I didn't, and I can't go back and save it. But you know that's why I enjoy doing YouTube to you know save up those moments, whether it be thrill moments like that or whether it be accomplishment moments. Uh, and really, that just that's a continuation of my motivation for YouTube, my journey on YouTube, as it were. Zedra asked about my journal world. Am I going to go back to it? I last recorded in it back in August of 2017. That was when I finished the city. And since then, 1.13 has come out and some 1.14 snapshots. Am I going to go back to it? Wait and see. Uh, other series. Uh, I will be uploading a lot of stream footage. I will hopefully continue to live stream uh, over the coming year. Probably following on from things that I've been streaming last year. Things like Skyrim, my modded journal, uh, I might go back and do some more Mountain Blade. It really just depends what I what I feel like doing, but I'll probably just be continuing stuff I did last year. And I'll continue to do Minecraft uh, streams on YouTube and other games on Twitch. It's one of these ones that I would probably get more... Well, I'm not convinced I'd get more viewers on YouTube, um, but obviously most of my subs on YouTube come from Minecraft, so in my opinion it's worthwhile to pursue that avenue here. And Twitch is just, it's still really an experiment. I did try a schedule at one point, but I, you know, that's not me. Usually I don't announce if I'm doing a schedule. I did this time just because I thought I might as well give it a go, see if I can uh, stick to it, but I just would prefer not to pursue such a thing unless I got super serious. Uh, so yeah, there will be a lot of stream footage, old live stream footage coming out on my YouTube channel at some point this year. You won't be able to tell necessarily that it was live stream footage unless you know exactly what I was streaming like. Unless you know what games I was streaming and all that. They'll just come out in the form of a, a let's play. There will also be a wee bit of spam coming out of my channel. I would never request anyone to say subbed even if I upload stuff they really really don't like. If I upload stuff you really really don't like or would really really rather not see in your sub box then by all means uh, feel free to unsub. Unclick the, uh, <laughs> the bell notification or whatever the heck that does. Uh, but I will be uploading, I had a lot of Football Manager footage and I've compiled uh, a lot of videos that I've titled Goal Lights and basically what it is is just silent raw footage of uh, game games that I've done. I had a lot of that 
a lot of those games saved up. And so what you'll get is videos that are one minute, two minutes long, that are silent, they just show goals. And maybe on occasions that will show chances. Uh, so they'll come out frequently throughout this year, I would think. And so, yeah, just be aware of that. And they'll just be titled Goal Lights Number... Well, it starts at number 8. I've already done 7. I uploaded... I've uploaded 7 kind of independent Football Manager videos where it's just been highlights of a game. I've uploaded about 7 of them in the past, like, couple of years. And I've just gone and retitled them Football Manager Goal Lights 1 to 7. So the first one that comes out will be 8. It'll just be like random PvP, but for Football Manager. Some of the games that I'll upload are actually decent, like, you know, I'm not just uploading random games, although it might seem like that at times. Some of them are, uh, you know, things like cup finals or high scoring games or whatnot. So, yeah, there should be some good ones to look forward to. Okay, let's get on to the questions about the game that's on everybody's lips. Hightail. I say on everybody's lips, it's not really on everybody's lips. The last person to speak about it with me was uh, Dolmo mentioned it in passing and he only knows about it because I told him about it. So without being too objective, my immediate thoughts for the game were... Well, I don't remember what my first thoughts were. Obviously I didn't do a reaction video to the trailer, so I don't remember exactly what I said or did or what my reactions were and all that. I think it can be a, a good thing. Uh, one of the things I'm particularly interested in is the PvP. I'm interested to see how that will come out. Obviously they've said it's going to be customizable, so I'm interested to see what people come up with. And it's something I'm definitely willing to give a go. I want to try the, like, the single player game as well. One of the things that you may have noticed about me, uh, based on my channel, is that I don't play an awful lot of sandbox games. The only sandbox game, the only pure sandbox game I actually play is... Minecraft. A lot of the other games I play are adventure games or simulation games or well mainly adventure games, mainly story games, things like that. So the the adventure side of Hytale definitely appeals to me uh, a fair bit. Uh, beyond that I don't really have any thoughts. Yeah I saw a YouTuber mention it today and his thoughts were that you shouldn't approach a game like this that's just been announced that has it's got a lot of information about it, but it doesn't have a huge amount of information about it. You know, we haven't actually a chance to play it yet. But you're, you're to approach these games with a very, very open mind. Because if you go into a new game like that with your own prejudices or whatnot, you may well be disappointed. It's like films these days. Loads of fan theories are born out of popular films and all that. And people can often be disappointed when the actual film comes out because they're you know, preconceived notions about it haven't come true or, you know, maybe the director's done something with a character that people thought was inadequate or didn't suit the plot that they had in mind or something. I'm not going to uh, approach it as a Minecraft rip-off, but equally I'm not going to approach it as the next big, uh, the next big thing or whatever. It's got people ex excited, which at this stage... Oh man, I'm going to die. I really don't want to die. At this stage, if you can generate that amount of hype with your game, then you're doing something right. So, I mean, credit to them. But I'm not going to get too overhyped about it. I made that video purely based on Minecraft, the Hytale Minecraft one. What was it called? Limit of Imagination or something like that. And my reason for making it was because I didn't quite agree with the whole idea that, you know, Minecraft's failed and Hytale's here to save the day kind of uh, idea. And I did get one comment that was... It basically said what I feared. It was like, oh, you've made this video too soon. We don't know an awful lot about the game. You've made a lot of assumptions. I don't think I made an awful lot of assumptions in it. Oh, dear. I didn't have my hands on the keyboard there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, didn't, I don't think I made too many assumptions in the video. The two assumptions I can think of off the top of my head... I made the assumption that the creators of the game would focus more on the PvP minigame side of things and not the... Uh, the building, like the creation in the vanilla world. I made that assumption. That might be wrong, I don't know. Time will tell. Beyond that, the other assumption I made was that the people that would follow the game, the people that would uh, want to play the game would be, you know, people who were just predominantly PvP Minecrafters, but also people who maybe hadn't played Minecraft for so long or didn't like the way it was going. I made that assumption. That might be wrong. Maybe this will attract an audience of people that haven't played Minecraft at all. Maybe it'll be a, a you know, wider audience than what I suggested. So those are two assumptions, but based on my idea and outline for the video, those aren't 
too important. Well, maybe the first one is, but the second one definitely isn't. What I was trying to do was basically take the information that we know about the game, what they've announced in their blogs, on the website, in videos, and just basically explain why it appears like it's going to be different. Obviously, we don't know quite how similar Minecraft and Hytale will be, but based on the well, the trailer, based on the blogs, we know immediately that Hytale's going to have more of an adventure outlook, which is radically different from Minecraft and its development. And I'm not going to go into it too much. You can go and watch the video. It's called Limit of The Limit of Imagination, Hytale and Minecraft. I was going to call it Hytale versus Minecraft or Minecraft versus Hytale, but I thought that's not really what I'm doing. I'm not really uh, trying to compare them. I'm trying to basically explain why Hytale is going to be inherently different from Minecraft. And one of the things I do like in games, and it'll be... It, Hytale appears like it's going to have an element of this in it, but I do like a lot of depth in video games. Uh, three of my favourite games of all time are... Well, Minecraft, obviously, is a standout. Loads of depth in Minecraft. There's a lot you can do with it. Other games I enjoy... Well, two of the other games that are my favourites. Football Manager, no surprise there, and Mountain Blade. They're both games that have... Uh, great detail to them. They've got a lot you can do in the games. There's a lot that... I mean, obviously they're all different. I mean, you're, you're not going to play Football Manager with the intention of conquering the worlds, and you're not going to play Mountain Blade with the intention of conquering a football league. <laughs> so I, I realised I started that sentence in the wrong way. But no, you get what I mean. Obviously they're both different genres, and they're made for different sorts of gamers. There's depth to those games that can keep you inspired... Uh, and motivated to do as well as you can with those games, and that's why I like them. Uh, I like a lot of other games for different reasons, but those are my three favourite by far, just because of the, the sheer depth that you get with them. Have I, been, I must have been here before. I do not remember coming here, though. But yeah, if Hytale has even a percentage of what I like about those games, then it'll be a good game. Um, but we'll wait and see. Will it come out this year? No idea. Will it come out next year? No idea. Well, actually, of course it won't come out this year unless it comes out in the next, like, two and a half hours. <laughs> but the, uh, no. Will it come out next year? I don't know. Uh, I would assume so. I doubt they would have, like, they've been working on this for years. I really doubt they would have, you know, released info about it this early if they don't have a release date on the horizon. Oh, and obviously, it also comes with a sign of the times. As soon as Hytale is announced, there is, like, a load of videos on it. I remember, I think, a day or two after it, the, the trailer came out, I just typed Hytale to YouTube, scrolled down, and there was video after video after video after video titled things like Minecraft 2, or Hypixel's new game, or, you know, just things like that, which were... It's interesting to think about, because the first Minecraft video that came out... It's 10 years, almost. This coming May, it'll be 10 years, the 10th anniversary of the, I guess, the announcement of Minecraft. But it was almost like Minecraft was released in a different age, an age when, well, YouTube was different. Arguably, this was still in the old YouTube age, where you had your classic, you know, Lego stop-motion animation videos, you had your 300 remixes, your Nyan Ka, I'm sure you can think of all your old favourite YouTube videos that came out in that age. So this was in an age when, you know, people didn't have it as their job, people weren't going to necessarily make a video on the latest uh, fad or whatever, I'm not saying Hytale's a fad, I'm just saying, you know, people make videos on anything that's blowing up these days. The point is, people didn't do that back when, uh, when Minecraft was released, or when the, the first video came out about it. It was a much more humble beginning. And I'm not saying that because it's like, oh, Minecraft's the original, Hytale will never be like that. No, I'm just saying that it's, they're both coming out in different ages. The Hytale uh, trailer has like 19, maybe 20 million views on it now. And this is like, what, a few weeks later. I highly doubt the Minecraft trailer, like, or not the trailer, but the first video of Minecraft had anywhere near that in the first month. So yeah, 10 years of Minecraft. It will be... I'm, I'm, I wonder if it'll be acknowledged, because arguably it was only like a... You know, it wasn't even a release, it was just, uh, you know, not showing off his game that he was developing. I'm not even sure when the first Minecraft game was uh, actually put out to the public. I, I should probably look it up. Like, for example, in episode zero of this series, I played in a bunch of versions that probably wouldn't have been out to the public, or they would have been played by very few people. 
Uh, oh dear. No, 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 no. I should probably eat. There we go. Uh, yeah, they would have just been development versions for Notch and his mates to try out or whoever he tested it with. Of course, it will be the 10th uh, anniversary of the first Minecraft video to be released, so it'll certainly be a an interesting moment. But yeah, you just wonder if it'll be acknowledged or if the true 10th anniversary will be... Uh, 2021, which will be 10 years since the full game was released. It's just one of these things that you don't quite believe how long it's been. And obviously various things have changed, you know, Minecraft communities have uh, come and gone, YouTubers have come and gone, a lot has happened in that time. The game itself has changed a lot, the state of things has changed, you know, Microsoft's now in charge, uh, and obviously a lot of servers have shut. You know, what big servers are there now? I mean, obviously, wait, what? What? Whoa! Okay, right, whatever. I've never seen that before. I remember it happened in one of Etho's early videos, but I've never seen something like that. Creeper just stopped dead in its tracks. Uh, yeah, so there's not that many big servers out these days. I mean, Hypixel still gets over 20k, which is even during... Well, yeah, even during the old days, that was still a good number. Uh, Mindplex is still up. If I get Hypixel and Mindplex mixed up, I do apologise. Uh, but Mindplex is still up, still gets into the thousands, Cubecraft is still up, MC Central's still up. But obviously there's a lot that's gone. Lichcraft, Epicube, uh, Bad Lion is probably one of the biggest. But yeah, the point is there's a lot of change, and a lot of change will yet happen, I am sure. So I finished up the caving, and I've basically said almost everything I was going to say. we still got about 45 minutes till the bells, so I'm just going to go and stand somewhere for the time that uh, they happen. I think we'll go to the tower in the kind of settlement area that we're uh, building. This thing here is a bit strange because it doesn't always work and I think this is actually worse, like having the half slabs above the water is actually worse than what it was before because sometimes the boat will veer out of position and it's difficult to get it back in. Oh, or this happens. Alright, well, there's not much we can do about it. I reckon this world will be glitchy forevermore. Anyway, I was going to speak about one or two other things uh, surrounding YouTube, uh, surrounding my approach. Obviously, there's very much uh, a mindset these days towards things like clickbait, towards doing certain videos and certain things and, you know, really putting yourself out there. All I'm going to say is each to their own. I'm going to stick with the approach I have stuck with all these years. I'm just going to continue as I have before. There shouldn't be any major tra uh, changes. Of course, there's no guarantee that I will continue with YouTube at any point, at any stage. It may it may stop for whatever reason. Uh, there there's could be a variety of reasons, but I'm just putting that out there. Uh, but, you know, as of now, at time of recording, I do intend to continue uh, with what I do in the way I have done so. And with regard to the new year, I don't have any resolutions, any like concrete resolutions. I mean, there's always ways I'm trying to improve myself and, you know, to do things differently, but I take things on a day-to-day -day basis. Each day is a different opportunity or presents different opportunity for people to, uh, you know, change, to do things differently, to make new day resolutions is effectively what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what 2019 brings. 2019 will bring with it its own challenges, its own highs, its own lows. There will be good times, there's no doubt about that, but there will also be uh, difficult times, there will also be challenges that uh, that we each have to face. And I guess one of the things you got to keep in mind is make sure you keep your your friends close, your family close, you know, people you trust close, because there may be times you may have to rely on these people uh, during the difficult times to really help me through. And one of the things that I always think about whenever I'm, you know, nervous about something or going through a tough time or uh, worried about something or whatnot, I always think to myself, if only I could, you know, fast forward two hours or if only I could fast forward to tomorrow or if only I could skip this thing out. In the moment of thinking that, I always then think to myself, if life really worked like that and I could, you know, wish myself forward two hours, I would just basically wish my life away. And in that, it's important to remember that yes, there are difficult times, but there are also positive times, times that are good. And it's important to enjoy the good times, but it's also important 
to learn from the bad times, to learn from the difficult times, and to really grow as a person through the challenges and things like that. So whatever you face this year, whatever you might be concerned about or anticipating, just take it in your stride, learn from it, experience it. Remember, it's all an experience. Everyone uh, goes through difficult times, obviously to varying degrees, varying scenarios, but the important thing is to learn and in some ways to commit to the experience. Okay, so now as you can see, we are within, or you can see if I've managed to put the clock up, uh, we're now within the last minute of 2018, soon to be 2019, uh, so while everyone in Scotland is out partying on this hog mini, I am indoors in a video game. I should probably actually click back to the actual game. That would be good. But everyone's enjoying themselves. I'm going to celebrate with uh, a glass of good Scottish tap water. And I got some oat cakes for Christmas. So I'll crack these open. And I shall celebrate once the uh, new year comes around. Oh, there we go. Ten seconds to go. <laughs> I feel like this is cringy. I feel like I'll look back in years to come and be like, what was I doing? But. Here we go, 2, 1, and BAM! There we go, 2019, New Year, excellent. That was perfect timing actually, because the, the sun just started setting there, as in the shadows started getting cast over the uh, the world. Anyway, yes, we're in a new year, this is now 2019, it is a different, different year from the one the previous minute, just in case you weren't aware. Uh, it's not quite New Year over in North America yet, but... Um, Let's see, uh, currently it's looking much the same as 2018, but I'm sure it will be very different in many ways. Thank you very much for watching this uh, episode of my Journey series. All the very best for the coming year. I will see you when I see you.